Let me begin my story today with the beautiful words of the Lord Jesus in his high priestly prayer in John 17. Verses 20 to 23 say, and this is very important for you if you're a believer, because this is you in the prayer. I do not pray for these alone, that is for the eleven, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Now, these are crucial ideas, aren't they? If we look around in our society today and less and less people are believing that God sent his son into the world, we need to shoulder some responsibility for that. One of the ways that people believe that God sent his son into the world is that Christ is living in us. And the evidence that Christ is living in us is that we are one with all of God's people. Now, the Bible makes it perfectly clear, as Paul writes to the Corinthians, God does not want us to take names that divide us from one another. The names that he's given are names that link us with one another. We're beloved, we're brethren, we're saints, we're disciples, and so on. These are words that unify the people of God. I want to tell a little story about a gospel effort we had in Richmond, Kentucky some years ago. There was about a hundred people that had joined together, and we were using various means to get the gospel out into that town. And one evening, fairly late, I was setting about to prepare for the lunches for the next day. My son and I had stopped at a little convenience store to ask directions to the sub shop where we were ordering the lunch for the next day. And there was a lady sitting at the counter and she helped us and gave us directions and asked us what we were doing in town. And we shared with her how we were there to proclaim the gospel to every creature. And she said, well, that's great. And she said, I'm from such and such a church and named the denominational group that she belonged to. And so we smiled and greeted each other and away we went. It was quite a distance at 55 miles an hour down this highway, several stops. We pulled into the parking lot. And as we were going into the store, there was no one else around, just the lady behind the counter. But up behind us pulled this very lady. And she came in the door a bit breathless and she said, listen, I was just so encouraged that you were here talking about the Lord to people. And, and she said, it's not much, but she squeezed $25 into our hand and said, I want to have a part in your work. And I hope you're encouraged at what God is doing with you. And I'll be praying for you. And I know at that moment, just heaven smiled on us. Here was a the linking together of people who didn't know each other at all. We had no connection with one another except for this, that we belong to the Lord Jesus. And in that moment, we saw this manifestation of the love of God and the unity of the saints. And that's exactly what we read here in John 17. And so the lady behind the counter, she was tattooed, had some body piercings. She looked uh, fairly uh, different from us. But immediately she, she said, wow, so, so you're here in this town to, to, to talk about the love of God to people. And I said, we sure are. And as I began to speak with her, she said, I think I'd like to encourage you and I'm going to give you a discount for your lunch tomorrow. Well, that wasn't the end of the story. Several days later, we were having a special luncheon for the ladies. And our sister uh, Vicky Gagne was there. She was dressing up as Corey Ten Boom, and she was going to present the gospel that way. And we'd been told there were maybe 60 ladies coming for lunch. And I had got a nice meal, a prime rib. I was going to slice it up, put it into some nice crusty rolls and some salad and some fruit salad and so on. Well, 
all of a sudden, these ladies started coming out of the woodwork and we had close to a hundred women and I had really only enough for 60. And I wondered where am I gonna get some extra beef? I had other buns and we could make some of the other things expand, you know, but we didn't have more prime rib. And I thought about this lady at the sub shop and I went over to her and I said, listen, I'm desperate here. I've just got a few minutes. All these ladies have arrived for lunch. Is there any way you could sell me some roast beef? And she said, you know, I, I've never really done this before, but, but I know what you're doing in town and I want to encourage you. And she went into the cooler and brought out a big slab of beef and she gave it to me. Of course, we paid for it, but it was such a, a tremendous manifestation again of the ongoing influence of that lady's fellowship with us. She gave us those funds, but it was more than that. It was a 3D expression of the love of God. And this woman observed that and she saw that there was something special going on there. People that didn't know each other, but we both knew the Lord and how we were linked together. And this dear lady accepted an invitation to come out and hear the gospel. And to see that influence was a manifestation again of this glorious truth that the world may believe that you sent me, said the Lord Jesus. They could see the evidence of Christ in us and the unity we had because of him. May the Lord encourage us all to practically manifest this love for all of God's people by whatever name they call themselves. We don't recognize man-made distinctions, but we do recognize the spirit-made unity that is provided through Christ and his blessed work at Calvary.